So what is a future contract? A future contract is a derivative in which two parties agree to exchange a certain good in the near future, usually in three or six months time. The price at which the exchange will happen is decided today and is called the future price. The good object of the transaction is called the underlying asset and this can be a commodity or a stock or a bond and recently even cryptocurrencies. Let's see how it works with an example. I can go to market watch and check the quotes of all these futures that you can see here. These are pulled directly from exchanges around the world and as you can see they are on a variety of underlying assets. Here at the top we have some bonds, if we scroll down we see some soybean and also futures on the S&P 500. These actually are super common. So how does it work? This particular future on the S&P has a price of 4172.90. If we buy this derivative instrument, it means that we are committing to buy the underlying asset for that price of 4172.9. If instead we decide to enter this contract as sellers, it means that we are committing in six months to sell the underlying asset, which is the index, at 4172.9. Now this is independent from the actual price of the S&P today. That is equal to 4,185.47. This is also called usually the spot price. I will only buy the future derivative if I have a strong conviction that the spot price will be above the future price throughout the next six months. If that is the case, I will be able to buy for 41.72 something that is actually worth more. And if the price stays to 41.85, I will be able to cash into a profit of 13 for each unit of the underlying asset. The profit for the buy side is always equal to the difference between the spot and the future price. Our counterparty, who is the seller of the future, has exactly an opposite opinion with respect to us. They think that in the next six months, the Standard & Poor's 500 will trend below its future price. Maybe they think that we reached the top and the market is too complacent. Maybe they think that we'll do a correction because we are still in a pandemic after all. Whatever the reasoning, they commit to sell us the underlying asset at 4172. If things go their way, and for most of the time the spot price is below the future price, they will be able to sell us something for 4172 that is actually worth less. And they will cash on a payoff or a profit that is equal to the difference between the future price and the spot price. And by the way, this is exactly what speculating is. Initiating a trade, starting a position in an asset, in a derivative, because you have the conviction that things will go your way. The buyer of the future makes money whenever the spot price is above the future price, so they are typically bullish. On the other hand, the seller of the future makes money whenever the spot price is below the future price, so they are typically bearish, because that's where they see uh, the market trending in the near future. Futures trade on the exchange and their price changes all the time, reflecting demand and supply. If a lot of speculators buy the future, then the price reflects that and it starts moving up so in favor of the long side. If a lot of people instead start selling the contracts, then the price reflects that by going down and moving in favor of the short side. Profits and losses are settled daily thanks to the clearinghouse. The clearinghouse is the financial intermediary that is responsible of marking the futures to market every day. Imagine that we entered as the buyer in this future on the S&P which has a price of 41.72 and after a few days the index crashes from 41.85, which was the spot price, to 41.62. At this point, since the spot has moved below the future, we will have made a loss as buyers. When this happens, the clearinghouse takes those 10 from our account to reflect that our position is losing money, even though the delivery date is in six months. This is what daily settlement means. The clearinghouse will take money out of our account and put it into our counterparty's account, so the sellers, to reflect that their position is instead winning because the S&P is trading downwards. In order to be allowed to trade futures on the exchange, one must open an account with the clearinghouse and that is called the margin account. When the contract is initiated, we also need to have a minimum balance, which is called the initial margin. The initial margin is usually 10% of the value of the contract. This depends on the future price, but also on how many units of the underlying we are committing to buy or sell at the delivery date. There is also a minimum amount of money that we must keep in the account at any point in time, 
and that is called the maintenance margin and is usually uh, equal to 5%. So in our example, if the spot price continues moving against us and the clearinghouse is withdrawing money from our account to put into our counterparty's account, at some point we might receive a margin call because the value uh, in our deposit has fallen below the maintenance margin. If that happens, uh, we just need to top it up, otherwise we will default on our position. And when we top up, we must make sure that we are covering back to the initial margin of 10%. So what are the differences between the futures and the forwards? Let's see them with this slide. Futures are standardized contracts, unlike forwards, which can be customized by the parties. So with forwards, the two parties can decide how many units they're going to transact. Uh, they have more flexibility on other terms of the contract, uh, but futures instead cannot be altered in any way. Future contracts are not normally used for actual delivery of the underlying, but they are settled with cash. So at the delivery date, the buyer gets S minus F or the seller gets F minus S depending on who is on the winning side. So depending on whether at the end the spot price finishes above or below the future price. That is why futures are normally used by speculators that are trying to get advantages from where markets are trading without actually getting exposure to the equities or bonds or commodities. And instead, forwards are used by hedgers who want to hedge their costs of raw materials normally. Futures are traded by an exchange which gives transparency. Instead, forwards are traded over the counter which doesn't give transparency, but gives them anonymity if they want it. With futures also, we just saw that profits and losses are settled daily. Instead, with forwards, profits and losses are settled only at the delivery date. That is all for today. I hope that you found this video useful. If that was the case, please share it with other people that might find it interesting as well. I thank you so much for watching this far and I'll see you next week. Thank you.